Hey, hey, friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney, and this week I am sharing three amazing meals that I made for my family this week. These were fantastic. Uh, one of them was new to us. One of them I changed up a little bit, and one of them is just kind of a fun recipe. I think these are all great for summer. They're light, or they're in the crock pot, or they're super quick and easy to make. So I am super excited to share these with y'all because I think they're a lot of fun. We're going to start off with the summer garden pasta. So this is actually based off of a barefoot contessa recipe. I will link her original recipe down below. I did make a few minor changes just to kind of um, brighten it up a little bit in flavor. So you start off by marinating some cherry tomatoes. I've got Flavor Bomb tomatoes. If you haven't had them, they're absolutely incredible. They are so full of flavor. They, to me, are like tomato flavor to the max. It is so good. So I've got about a pint of them set out on my cutting board. They're washed and ready to go. And here in this bowl, I have taken some of my uh, confit garlic, which I did just upload a video for yesterday. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I make that, it's a quick and short video. It's super easy and one of my favorite things in the whole world. My kitchen will not be without it, y'all. So if you are interested, make sure you check out that video as well. But anyway, I just started off by adding that to a bowl and I kind of mashed it up a little bit and then went ahead and added in some olive oil. So we're making the marinade sauce for these tomatoes because this marinade sauce and the tomatoes are the pasta, really. They are what make the dish. So she called for some red pepper flakes, but I've got that chili garlic crunch stuff that's got just so much incredible flavor. So I just added in a heaping teaspoon of that instead of some red pepper flakes. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and toss in a little bit of salt. I use like the really big crystal salt, so it looks like I'm using a lot more than I am. Uh, you could go with regular Italian seasoning, but I've got this stuff by Kinder's and this stuff is definitely one of my favorites. It's got lemon in it, and it just is so amazing. It, it does taste a lot like Italian seasoning, but with that lemon, it's just incredible. So I went ahead and added a little bit of that in, and then a little bit of uh, extra Italian seasoning in there just to make sure we had plenty of herbs for flavor. And I'm going to change things up a little bit. Ina Garden in hers calls for garlic, olive oil, cherry tomatoes, basil leaves, which I did not have any fresh basil, uh, the red pepper flakes, salt and pepper, and that's pretty much it. I wanted to have a little bit of extra citrus to it, so I've got this lemon, and I'm going to go ahead and just zest that right in there because you know the most flavor from the lemon is in the oils that are in the zest, and it will really, really brighten this up so much. And it wasn't overwhelmingly lemony at all, but it was so good. So I went ahead and zested it, and then I went ahead and juiced it. I still have not replaced my broken juicer, so I just hand squeezed it over a strainer to make sure I didn't get any seeds in there because nobody wants to bite down on a seed. That is not good eats. Uh, anyway, once you've got this all together, you just want to slice your tomatoes in half and toss them in that marinade. You can do it for, you know, the whole day if you want to. I was running behind on this day, so mine only marinated for about an hour, and that was plenty of time. It was perfect. Everything came together and was absolutely fantastic. Just make sure that you do cut these in half so that the flavor gets inside of them and they give all of their tomato juice out to this because what you have in the end is going to be the actual sauce of the pasta, these tomatoes, and that marinade. I'm also going to go ahead and give a rough chop to this parsley and toss that in there just because I wanted something fresh because I didn't have any fresh basil. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. It was so good, man. I love fresh parsley in a pasta because it's just light and it tastes so good and so, I don't know, so summery and garden fresh. But anyway, I just let this hang out for a while, and then I, um, when I was ready to serve dinner, I came in and I boiled my pasta noodles. I'm just using regular spaghetti, nothing fancy, and I went ahead and cooked it per the box directions, drained it, and then I'm just going to go ahead and add the marinated tomatoes to, and the, the sauce to this pasta while it's still nice and hot after I have drained it. It's okay if you have a little bit of pasta water left in there. Not a big deal. It just kind of helps make the sauce. But I scraped out all that I could from that bowl because this is what we're adding. And then I mixed everything. And I also added in some fresh Parmesan cheese. If all you have is the green shaker tub, no worries. You can add that in. I've used that in the past. I did not always keep fresh Parmesan on hand just because budget-wise, the green shaker tub is usually a better bang for your buck. But I like fresh Parmesan when I can get it. And so I did go ahead and shred it up. I buy mine at Sam's Club and I buy the big wedge of it. 
and I just shred off what I need each time I'm making a meal and then double wrap it in plastic wrap and keep it in my fridge. And as long as I keep it double wrapped, it stays good for quite a while. Um, you just gotta kind of take care of it like that and it will last you. And I think I pay about $9 for one of those wedges. I never get the biggest ones in there. I always try to get the smallest because as much as we like uh, Parmesan cheese and Italian dishes, we just need the small one. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, I'm just mixing that all together. And that is it. I just made some uh, garlic toast to go on the side of this. Nothing too fancy, but man, this was so good. It's light and fresh, and those tomatoes are still pretty raw, so they've got so much amazing flavor. But they heat up while you're tossing them around in the pasta like this, and that is just enough between the marinade and the heat to kind of give that sweetness that tomatoes naturally have, just kind of get it going and brighten their flavor even more. It was absolutely incredible. I love a good pasta dish, and I think summer's a perfect time for pastas because veggies and pastas, like, they just go hand in hand. Just a perfect pairing, but not garlic toast. I made Rhodes Rolls. What was I thinking? Rhodes Rolls. I have them in my freezer, but that was awesome. It was so good. So onto this pork barbacoa. I actually saw somebody make um, pork barbacoa in the slow cooker on Food Network, not Food Network, on YouTube the other day. And I was like, I happen to have a pork roast, which... At the time, I decided I was going to go ahead and get one because they had them on sale that week. But um, I, I thought I had all the ingredients. And I ended up, like I said, I bought one because they were on sale. So it was perfect timing. But this was really easy to throw together because I had everything else. So I started off with some beef broth. And then I added in, I had the chipotle sauce. Like it's the can of chipotle sauce, no peppers. But you could always use the, the peppers. That's fine too. No big deal. Um, if I had had them, I would have tossed them in here. I just didn't. I'm also going to go ahead and throw in some salt and some pepper. And then there's a couple of other um, spices and herbs that it calls for. Uh, cumin, oregano. Um, it did call for a handful of cilantro, which I completely forgot to buy cilantro this week at the store. I don't know why I forgot it. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I also added in some garlic powder and some onion powder, and it called for cloves, but I totally forgot to add those in. I think it probably would have been a fantastic addition, but that's okay. And I also added in a little bit of um, coriander because I didn't have the cilantro. And then as you can see, I've got my roasted garlic there on the counter. I'm gonna put that in and some lime juice and some apple cider vinegar. There's like a ton of stuff in here. It just creates amazing flavor. So what I ended up doing was I made this marinade and popped it in the fridge. And before I went to or to bed Monday night at about 11 o'clock, I put this giant pork roast in my slow cooker with this on it and let it go all night long. And in total, cause I cooked down low, it went for about 15 hours. It was ready in time for lunch the next day. And that was absolutely perfect. Cause that's what I wanted. Uh, we had some barbacoa tacos for lunch uh, for the 4th of July. It was fantastic, but I am not going to blend my sauce. Uh, if you have the peppers and adobo sauce, the chipotle peppers and adobo sauce, and you put in your garlic in there and you put um, like a large onion chopped in there instead of onion powder, you're going to have a really chunky sauce. So if you want to, you could always blend that up in the blender. It will make your sauce a little bit thicker. Mine was very liquidy, so I just kind of reduced it after um, the pork was done cooking. I just kind of cranked the heat up on my Ninja Foodie on high and let it just boil away for a few minutes just to kind of help thicken it up a little bit because I did add the sauce back to the meat to keep it from drying out uh, when we make tacos or sandwiches or whatever and I did end up freezing half of this which was also incredibly perfect because now I've got a meal for a future date and while the flavor in this was absolutely fantastic it could really go a million other directions so I thought to myself this would be perfect for like barbecue sandwiches or something like that um, so I've got a whole bag of it in my freezer should I decide to pull it out and use it at any given time. But the recipe that I'm using is actually for pork, which um, I think usually bar barbacoa is beef, is made with a type of beef, but maybe it is pork. I really could have sworn that usually it's beef. Anyway, this was fine. This was delicious. It was so good. I just poured that right on over, chunks of garlic and all, some bay leaves. I did add a couple of bay leaves in there at the end. And like I said, I cooked this overnight for about 15 hours. It was about 11 o'clock at night or so when I got this uh, going in the slow cooker. And I let it go until it was super soft and tender and it was falling apart. And as you can see, I just shredded it up like that. And I simmered the sauce like that just to kind of reduce it down to help thicken it up. And we just kind of did these as tacos. Now that sauce is great. I mean, you could use it as a sauce. You could add in uh, cornstarch and stuff if you want to to really thicken it up. 
I just like to add it to my meat, and I do the same thing when I make brisket to keep the meat from drying out. You know, once you shred it, the juice is really pretty much drained out, so it's easy for shredded meat to dry out. So I always just put some of the sauce right back on top of whatever it is I'm shredding, and I store it that way, I freeze it that way. It just helps keep the flavor and the juices in there so it's not dry. And I had a pretty good amount of meat there. I actually ended up putting some of that in the freezer as well. I already have over half of it reserved back behind that bowl and that blue one. And I do end up freezing some more by the end of the week. It was a lot more meat than I anticipated. But that's awesome because I've got meals for the future. It's already cooked. And here with um, all the heat we have in Texas this summer, I am so not going to complain about having some easy ready meals in my freezer that don't require me to turn on the oven or heat up the kitchen or anything like that because we had a heat wave for a couple of weeks. It was really miserable and it's kind of cooled down for about a week and a half now, but next week is going to be in the triple digits again, so I'm not going to want to turn on the oven or anything. And there was our spread. I made some homemade salsa and um, I put out some parsley because I did have some parsley. So, so I would have something fresh and cream to put on there. And I've got some uh, tortillas, some seasoned black beans. There, of course, is my shredded pork. I had some uh, shredded cheese. And I just made a box of the uh, long grain rice aroni to go with it because I didn't feel like making Spanish rice. But it was so good. Oh, and pickled onions. I made another batch of pickled onions. These are like a regular staple in my house at this point. We absolutely just love them. And I think I like them better with the um, Vidalia onions or the 1015s instead of the red onions. Okay, so we are on to the last meal of the video, and this is garlic bread pizza. I bet a lot of y'all have seen this or made this. I love it because it's so easy to customize everybody's pizza to their specific taste. Um, and for my household, we all like different pizza. I mean, my oldest son Xander and I could easily eat the same pizza. He likes a ton of veggies on his with all the meats. I'm not as crazy about the meats on mine, but I'm willing to eat it to get all the veggies. So we could compromise, but... Like, my husband only wants pepperoni and maybe some black olives, and my kids only want cheese. So it's one of those where, yay, everybody can have what they want. Um, I always start off by making my own pizza sauce. I really hardly ever buy pizza sauce. I just don't feel the need to. It's so easy to make, and I don't feel like it's the star of the show, so it doesn't require a lot of ingredients. We're covering it up with so many other things. I keep it pretty basic. So I just opened a small can of tomato sauce. I added in a little bit of my garlic oil. That That's what I got when I made my confit garlic the other day. Um, the byproduct is garlic oil, so that's awesome. You get two things for, you know, one dish. I think that's amazing, and the garlic oil is fantastic. So I put some of that in. Then I used some of that Kinder's Italian seasoning, but you could just use regular Italian seasoning, a little salt, a little pepper. And I always throw in a little bit of sugar because the... Um, the canned tomatoes kind of have like a tinny taste to them. It's real acidic and everything. And that just kind of helps take the edge off. So I had purchased these um, French breadsticks from Sam's Club. So they're like, I don't know, 20 feet long. They're the longest breadsticks I've ever purchased. They were so big. Uh, but that's okay. They were a great price. And we'll use them for other things. Like these make great sub sandwiches. I mean, like absolutely amazing sub sandwiches. So I might very well make some sub sandwiches with these. I don't know. So to make the French bread pizza or garlic bread pizza, I just cut off like a six inch portion really. And then I'll cut that in half. So basically you're getting the equivalent of like a six inch sub sandwich. Um, and once I get those cut into the little sub sizes, I slice them in half. So everybody gets like two pieces of pizza essentially. And then I start to prep that. I do kind of like to mash mine down just a little bit because this bread is super fluffy. You could pull out some of the middle if it's too much bread for you. I know some people don't love that much bread on the bottom. So really, like, it's at your discretion what your family likes. You could always purchase different bread, too. Make sure that the French bread or Italian bread or whatever you're using, make sure that if your family likes to eat it, that it's a good bread. You could even use, like, the pre-made garlic toast in the freezer section. Those would make this super simple. So I've got this Chef Chamois garlic butter. This is not my favorite thing. I don't love it. Um, it's very salty. I would rather just kind of make my own. But I'm just going to use a little bit because I wanted this to be garlic bread pizza. And this worked out great for that. So I just melted it and kind of put a little bit on each piece of the garlic bread pizza. And that is what makes this garlic bread <laughs> is that Chef Chamois. You could always make your own and that would be my preference. It's just like butter. You can put some Italian seasoning or parsley. Pepper's really nice in here. And of course, garlic powder or some fresh minced garlic is totally up to you. And then I like to add just a little bit of salt to mine because I always feel like it just tastes a little better with salt. Um, the Chef Chamois has a ton of salt in it. It's super salty. 
And I think that's why it's not my favorite because it's so, so salty. But I do like to make sure that this is covered. Uh, what is it that the guy on that cookie show used to say? Crust to crust is a must. What was he, the Sandwich King? Did y'all ever watch um, that guy on Food Network? He hosted like a Saturday morning show with a couple other people. And then he also had his cooking show there for a while. And he did sandwiches. I love sandwiches. Like sandwiches are life for me. I absolutely adore them. So I, I enjoyed watching his show, but he always said crust to crust is a must. So that's what I'm doing here. I got the garlic butter from one edge of the crust to the other side of the crust, made sure it was fully coated. And then I went ahead and topped this with cheese. This is my pizza. Now, if you wanted pizza sauce on yours, this is where you would add your pizza sauce. I'm not a fan of pizza sauce. I usually order my pizza without sauce. I always ask for like garlic butter or something like that in its place. So that's what I am making for me. I'm also one of those people that really likes to cheese it up. Like I feel like it's pizza, so go big or go home. This is the one time you can go nuts well, I guess nachos too. Pizza and nachos. You can totally go nuts with cheese, so let's do it, right? I haven't been eating as much cheese lately in, in you know, my day-to-day -day life, so when I do have like pizza or nachos or something, I really do like to kind of probably go overboard. I like a lot of cheese. I also like a lot of veggies on my pizza, so I am totally going to just like cover this. And yes, that is one of my kids coming up to talk to me about something. Uh, you guys know how it is with mom life. It's just the way it is. <laughs> anyway, I went ahead and cheesed this right on up, and then I also had a little bit of provolone cheese. So that is my secret for a really beautiful cheese pull. Provolone cheese will give you that and has a really nice flavor that blends perfectly with pizza. So I just use the sliced uh, provolone cheese and that way I can use whatever I have left over for sandwiches. As it turned out, we ate pizza a couple of nights in a row, so I really don't have much left. But I just do one slice per side and this gives you that beautiful stringy cheese pull. It's stretchy, it's melty, it's delicious. And it tastes very similar to mozzarella if you haven't had it. You really, as long as you get the, the not smoked provolone. The regular smoked provolone is really good for sandwiches though. Uh, so for this one, I decided to add a little salami on there. We had a little bit left and my son loves salami. So I went ahead and put just a little bit on one of my pieces of pizza. And then I used pepperoni because you can't go wrong with pepperoni. Uh, typically I'll go for a veggie pizza, but I really was feeling the pepperoni this night. I, I It sounded fantastic. And in the air fryer, it gets beautifully crispy and crunchy and it's so good. So do not skip on the pepperoni if you're going to cook this in the air fryer because it is at its best when it's in there. And yes, I do like to go heavy on the pepperoni. I like to kind of just shingle my pizza, I guess, like a roof. <laughs> and I have a ton of toppings cut up on this plate over here. You can put whatever you want on there. I love veggies. In fact, I had marinated some of those um, Flavor Bomb tomatoes, which is some olive oil and garlic and salt and just let them sit on the counter for about 30 minutes and it draws the juices out and they develop this beautiful flavor. So I even added some of those onto my pizza and they were absolutely epic because they caramelized a little bit when they were cooking. I'm adding some green olives on there. I like the green olives that are soaked in vermouth. They're, I think they say martini olives on them. I am not a fan of martinis. Um, I had martinis like once in my life uh, my sister-in-law and I and a friend got together and had chocolate martinis and um, that was the one time I had them and I will never have them again. <laughs> but I will say I do like the green olive soaked in vermouth. Uh, very, very good. They kind of like have a really nice Christmas to them. Crispness. So I put those on my pizza and I put some bell pepper and some onions. There's my marinated tomatoes. And uh, I'm going to put some onions on here in a minute too. But you can put whatever you like on there. Maybe you like sausage. I don't know. Maybe you want some jalapenos. Jalapenos are good on a pizza. Bacon's good. I didn't have any on this particular day. But it is fantastic. I've got some black olives. I don't remember if I put any on my pizza or not. But I know I had some. Um, I just really like to go nuts. And at the very end, because I've piled it so high once I have put all of my toppings on there. I do like to put a little extra sprinkle of cheese on top because when it melts, it's like a glue that kind of holds everybody in place when I'm trying to eat this pizza. And like I said, this does get a little crispy on the outside and it stays nice and fluffy on the inside. So it helps to have everything kind of glued together and stuck in place. And there's that onion. I have been enjoying these Vidalia onions. I got them on sale a couple of different times at Market Street and I store them in a cool, dark place in the back of my pantry and they stay good for a long, long time. So if you happen to see some on sale, it's a great buy. I think I paid less than $2 per bag of these. And like I said, I've had them for quite a while. I store them in a nice, dry, cool place in the back of the pantry, and they last a long, long time. 
So these were really good. They also kind of caramelize when you um, bake them because they do kind of have a natural sweetness to them. And like I said, that little bit of cheese to just kind of glue everybody together on the end. And then I put these in my air fryer. I just set it at 400 degrees for five minutes and I put them in, in the preheat cycle time. Uh, so in total, I think they cooked for about six to six and a half minutes. And the cheese is melty and gooey. I had a lot of toppings. If you have fewer toppings, you might want to cut back on the time that you cook it. This is so good. Oh my gosh, my husband said it was definitely one of his favorites too. But anyway, that is it for dinner. We had some great meals and I've got some good stuff coming up this next week. It's super easy and quick and summer stuff. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can watch all that. I will see you guys soon. Have a fantastic weekend. Thanks guys. Bye.